I got myself in a sticky situation. I'm out in the shop tonight and I want to show you a new product. I picked this tip up from Scott Seifer, who's another YouTuber, and you may remember that I highlighted a couple of his videos a week or so back, and um, I saw this in his first video that I watched, and I'd never tried it before, so I went to Walmart, and I bought a roll of this uh, peel and stick laminated transparent shelf paper, and it's 12 inches wide by 36 feet long. So for what I'm going to do with it, this is a really good value because I only paid uh, less than $6 for this. If you've ever watched any of my other videos, you've probably noticed that when I apply the pattern to the wood blank, I use a spray adhesive on the back of the pattern. And rather than just applying the pattern directly to the wood, I usually use blue painter's tape underneath the uh, pattern and this gives you a, a couple of advantages one is it makes the pattern much easier to remove the other is if you're using some nice hardwood especially like cherry that tends to burn real bad the glue from the tape actually lubricates the blade and prevents that burning it also makes your blades last longer now there's a lot of people out there that will tell you just apply the pattern you know right to the wood and when you get ready to take it off uh, you can put a little alcohol on it and it'll, it'll lift right off. And that's true to some extent, but I still prefer uh, the tape method. Now, generally what I use is I use the blue painter's tape. The problem with this stuff is if you've ever purchased any, it's expensive. Uh, so luckily you don't go through a whole lot of it, but if you do a lot of scrolling, it can add up to a little bit of price. In the past, I've also used the clear box tape, sometimes called packing tape, and what you'll do in that case is you'll apply the pattern to the wood and then you'll clear, put the clear box tape over the top of that. And that has the advantage of uh, preventing the burning, but it doesn't have the advantage of making the pattern easy to remove. As a matter of fact, it usually makes it easier. Now, the, us, the plus side of this is it's very cheap. You can get really cheap stuff. So I abandoned the clear packing tape a few years ago, went with the blue painter's tape and I've been pretty happy with it but when I saw this peel and stick in Scott's video I went out and bought three rolls of it and I'm going to show you how it works. I'm going to give you a good view of this up close so you'll know what to look for when you go to Walmart. You can find this on Amazon but it's about twice the price and it's not available directly from Amazon so it's easier just to go to Walmart if you've got one handy and pick it up. You can also order it online from Walmart. Um, I ordered it online and then went to the store to pick it up. But it's called Peel and Stick uh, Laminate Transparent uh, Shelf Paper. So that's what you're looking for and now we'll go back over to the workbench and take a closer look at it. When you get this stuff out of the wrapper and you unroll it, you've got a shiny side and a paper side. And the paper side, of course, is the piece that will peel off. And the clear side is the actual uh, transparent shelf lining paper. And what I do is I just take my wood blank, place it on a rolled out section. So I'm going to get it exactly the size I need it. And then I take an X-Acto knife and just trim around it. Now, one thing this does when you trim around it like this is it can tend to leave smaller sections, especially if this would have been a lot bigger. And I just roll those small sections back up and realize that I may waste a little bit of this, but it's so cheap, it's so much cheaper than blue painter's tape that I really don't care if I throw a little bit of it away. 36 feet of this at 12 inches wide is gonna last a long time. It's going to last much longer than the blue painter's tape, and it's so much cheaper, it's just not a problem. So anyway, once you get your piece cut out, um, there's a little bit of a hassle of trying to uh, remove the backer paper, but I found if you just kind of roll it over a little bit, it's not too bad. Um, it is still faster than the blue painter's tape, just simply because you usually have to use three, four, five strips of the blue painter's tape, you know, to cover your piece anyway. The good thing is once you get it undone, it's stiff enough that it doesn't want to roll up on you like some other uh, clear tapes would. So you get this out and you can handle it pretty easy to put it on your wood. And then I just lay it down and you don't have to be super careful. And I do, you know, apply a little pressure to it. And then I can take and put my pattern on there with my spray adhesive. And what I found is, is this stuff is very durable. I haven't had any lifting problems. 
or any problems at all with it coming up. Uh, but once we get some of this cut, uh, I'll take the pattern back off and show you just how easy it does work. After I applied the transparent shelf paper, I put a little spray adhesive on the back of the pattern and stuck it down to the blank. I've drilled just a couple of entry, interior entry holes and we'll go over and make a few cuts and then we'll take the pattern off of the blank. I've got a number three Pegas modified geometry blade in here so it does have some reverse teeth on it. Uh, the reverse teeth obviously are the biggest challenge for the tape because it tends to want to lift the tape back off. So I wanted to use a reverse tooth blade uh, just to give the demonstration uh, as much of a challenge as possible. So we'll cut out the little uh, star pattern on this manger and maybe one other cut and uh, show you that there's no lifting and then we'll take it back over to the uh, workbench and remove the pattern. getting absolutely no lifting of the tape at all. Uh, I have not at this point scrolled any real intricate patterns or used a spiral blade on them. So I have to go back and test that before I know how well that's going to work. Uh, but in general, I've used it on about five projects now and I couldn't be more pleased with the results. And I'll show you the proof of the pudding here in a minute. Okay, we've got the star cut out. Let's do uh, one more. Let's do this O down here, just so we've got a couple pieces to lift up as we remove the pattern. And I want to thank for uh, Scott on YouTube for showing me this little tip, because uh, at this point I've convinced myself this is what I'll use uh, as my primary tape now. And we'll just cut a quick little interior cut here of the center of this O. That's good enough. Now, let's remove it, go back over to the workbench and take a look at how it lifts up. Got the project back over here at the workbench. Obviously, we didn't cut the whole thing, but I just wanted to do a quick demonstration here uh, because a few people have asked me about this since I mentioned it a while ago. Um, let me say one thing about the different techniques for applying pattern to your boards. There's some people out there that'll tell you you don't need any tape, and I have no problem with that. If you don't feel comfortable using it, or if it's an extra expense you don't want to spend, by all means, you know, don't use it. Um, from my experience over a lot of years, the people that don't use tape generally do not use nice hardwoods. They're not generally cutting cherry or walnut or maple. Uh, they're generally cutting pine, poplar, and things like that, or even uh, Baltic birch plywood. The tape underneath the pattern comes in the most handy for wood that tends to want to burn, like cherry. Um, even if the burning wasn't an issue, I would personally still use the tape under the pattern just simply because it makes your blades last longer. Um, now, again, you're going to get mixed reactions to that. You're going to have people tell you that I'm crazy. But, you know, use your own judgment. Try all the different techniques and uh, come to your own opinion on that. I'm just telling you what I do and my experience with it. Okay, let's take this pattern off this board. If when you're putting the uh, transparent shelf lining paper on the blank, you leave just a little bit hanging over the edge right there, it makes it real easy to grab that edge and just peel that pattern right off. And I think you can see how easy that was. The tape leaves almost no glue residue on the board. Uh, which is uh, sometimes a problem with the clear packing tape uh, because you are spraying the back of the pattern and the back of the pattern, the glue off of that gets on the board. Uh, so this does a really good job of that. Now the blue painter's tape doesn't leave any glue residue either, but this uh, seems to be equal to the blue painter's tape as far as not leaving any residue on the board. Uh, not that big a deal to sand it off if it does, but in this case the board comes off nice and clean. Okay, uh, my final impression of this is that it works great. Uh, if you use tape or consider want to consider using tape, go pick some of this uh, peel and stick up from Walmart, and uh, hopefully you'll like it as much as I do. Thanks again to Scott Seifer for pointing this out to me, and we'll catch you next time here at the Scroll Saw Workshop.